Audrey, thank you for a really great talk this morning. You had some very interesting work regarding polysome RNA versus the cytosolic. Part of the idea is uh, transcription is not the end of everything. So that once the mRNA is made, even when it's spliced, it needs to migrate out into the cytosol and attach to ribosomes and be translated. So there are many different places where this can be regulated. And what we're finding is that regulation, even attachment to the polysomes and progress down the polysomes, is also allelic, as in the, the um, genetic makeup of the RNA makes a difference. So some RNAs are much more prone to falling off or just load differently onto the polysomes. Um, the other thing that's interesting is we, we saw RNA loading looking at um, long non-coding genes too and pseudogenes. We actually found that they loaded onto the polysomes. And in fact, there were even allelic differences with that too. So a whole new layer of regulation that we can look at. Again, we like RNA-seq and, and looking at the differences, the allelic differences, as long as we can measure them. And as far as this difference in allelic contribution, was it tissue specific, you developmental? Know what, uh, that's, a, that's a good point. We did not look at that. We've only looked at cultured lymphocytes yet. Um, now, in our other work, not necessarily with polysomes, uh, we do see allelic differences, even from tissue to tissue. The, the specific functional variants may or may not play a role in specific tissues. And that particular work you mentioned is ongoing, and so yes. it hasn't been published yet, is that yes. right? Yes, this is actually in preparation. There are a few people writing as we speak to try and fine tune this paper, so uh, I can't go into too many more details. So, you know, it, I, I don't imagine this is something that will be proprietary but just something until we you know, get a good handle on the genes and the validation. That yeah. I'll keep a little bit close to our chest. And then you went on to talk about your use of AmpliSeq RNA. Yeah, again, this is something I, I like more than I expected to like. The, this is the whole transcriptome AmpliSeq RNA kit. And it's nice because it's in a single tube. Um, the whole process, you, you don't take it out of the tube until you clean it up. So it's it's less than two days to get it on the templating sequence the next day, so it's fast. Um, it seems really consistent in our hands. We've looked at FFPE, we've looked at some neurologic tissue, stem cell derived brain organoids, and been able to look at expression differences that characterize them as being from brain or neuronally um, stimulated to become neuronal cells compared to, say, cardiac cells or whatever. So it's good for those types of uses. If I remember correctly, this uh, collaborator of yours had a very urgent need to get data quickly. Twice, twice <laughs> in a month. First, first time he said, okay, I need this you know, as quickly as possible. So we sort of threw it into an early access, did a couple of cells, a couple of samples. And mm -hmm. they looked so nice that with another grant deadline coming up, um, he said, can we do some more and get them out really quickly? So we got it on Tuesday. We got the RNA on Tuesday. Um, and they make beautiful RNA, so that really helps. But got the RNA on Tuesday, templated it Wednesday night, um, and sequenced on Thursday, got him results on Friday. He turned in the grant on Monday. So Amazing. Yeah. What is it about waiting to the last minute to finish a grant? I, you know, I think that's a thing that a lot of scientists do, <laughs> myself included. <laughs> My boss, I think. You know, and there's always so much more, you know, as you start thinking about these things and you start finding interesting things, it just leads to more and more things. So it's hard to write a grant when you're making new, discover new discoveries in the process. And you it, mentioned that you were expecting some of those data sets to be poor. Yes. Can you elaborate that? Yes. Well, this was in particular, um, these are not embryonic cells, but they're cells that are driven to be embryonic, very, you know, and then stimulated to development in neuronal pathways. So this last experiment, he gave us some cells that were very embryonic looking plus some that were in different stages of development. And the very embryonic cells, I thought they didn't work. Um, and, you know, emailed and called, and he got back to me and said, why do you think they didn't work? You know, and I said, because there just aren't that many genes expressed, and it looks different from these others. And he said, 
oh, but that's exactly what we expected. Interesting. So, you know, again, it's one of these things where you worry, as a lab person, you worry about it and go, oh my gosh, what did we screw up? And it turns out, oh no, this is just, this is detecting exactly what it should be detecting. And that reminds me, you mentioned your technician looking forward to using yes. the Cold Transcript. Yes, though. yes. Um, again, it's the simplest, it's the simplest thing that we do. It's simpler than any of the other AmpliSeq panels. It's certainly simpler than whole transcriptome. So when I said, Mandy, can you throw in eight samples for AmpliSeq transcriptome? She was like, oh yes, that's my favorite thing to do. Oh, how interesting. So, yeah. And lastly, in the Q&A, there was some discussion regarding what we consider normal. Can you elaborate? Yeah, on now this is more in the context of DNA and genetics, and it's something that's kind of near and dear to the, the philosophy of our group, and that is that really normal, there, there's an abundance of, of variants that have accumulated that really are meant to, to bias towards wellness, not towards disease, but to wellness. But as these variants accumulate in the population at high frequencies, they also interact. So it's not just about finding normal variants that affect function, it's also about finding the interaction between those normal variants and predicting how that might affect or skew function in different ways. So. That's great. Well, thank you again for oh, again, sharing this work you. with us. Uh, thank you. Thank you.